Hi, my name is Elaine Ernst, and welcome to my nursing research and evidence-based practice project, Down the Rabbit Hole, A Quest for the Evidence to Apply in Practice. My clinical question is, what is the safety and efficacy of hydroxyzine versus the benzodiazepines in the treatment of generalized anxiety disorder in older adults? Generalized anxiety disorder, which is also known as GAD, is characterized by excessive worry, fear, apprehensive expectation, feelings of impending doom, and generally lasting at least six months, and is usually manifested by symptoms such as restlessness, fatigue, concentration problems, irritability, muscle tension, and quite frequently, disturbances of sleep. It causes the individual great distress and can impair a person's occupational, social, and other areas of functioning. It's more common in impairing in older adults than previously thought and can be more challenging to diagnose in this population due in part to the physiological changes associated with aging, including recall issues and insight issues and the ability to recognize worry as excessive. The treatment of GAD usually involves psychotherapy and pharmacotherapy with the antidepressants as the first line treatment. Drugs such as the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors like paroxetine and the serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors such as venlafaxine. And also adjunct or add-on therapies. And these include the benzodiazepines such as alprazolam and clonazepam, buspirone, gabapentin, and some other medications, but also hydroxyzine, which is an older generation antihistamine that has anxiolytic, hypnotic, and antiemetic properties. In my current practice setting in an urban outpatient behavioral health clinic, I started to notice that older adults with GAD were being prescribed hydroxyzine or being transitioned from benzos to hydroxyzine due to safety concerns. I also found that I was doing more PAs, prior authorizations for insurance companies, for medications in particular, the benzos in the older adult population, and the documents were citing information from the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services rules about benzos, coverage criteria and quantity limits, and frequently discussed the beers criteria, which was something I was unfamiliar with. My preliminary literature search was not good. <laughs> I found very little in the way of studies involving subjects age 65 and over. I was very discouraged and actually considered modifying my clinical question or even abandoning it and choosing something completely different. But I decided to keep calm and dig deeper. And when I did that, using Cochrane, PsychInfo, and CINAHL, and a variety of combinations of search terms, I did find some information of higher quality, including some systematic reviews, a few clinical trials, some observational studies, a clinical practice guideline, a narrative review, and a research protocol between the years of 1995 and 2018. This is a list of terms I compiled based on things I was reading in the research articles. Of particular importance is the abbreviation PIMS, which stands for Potentially Inappropriate Medications, because that's going to come up several times in this presentation. And then also SUD, which stands for Substance Use Disorder. The rest are acronyms for various assessment tools that are used in the diagnosis and treatment of GAD. The two randomized control trials that I found were studies out of France, one in 95 and one in 2002, and they were pretty similar. They both compared hydroxyzine to placebo in the treatment of GAD. One study compared hydroxyzine and bromazepam, which is a benzodiazepine, against placebo. Both confirmed that they were uh, efficacious in treating GAD, and there were no differences in the effectiveness when compared, compared to placebo, and the safety results were comparable. The problem for me was both studies involved patients that were 
um, in their mid 40s. The systematic review that I found most interesting was the 2015 update to the beers criteria. And I learned that the beers criteria is a list of medications that are compiled by a panel of experts who review all the latest evidence. And they designate drugs as PIMS, potentially inappropriate medications for use in older adults. Their specific recommendations, which related to my study, were hydroxazine as a member of the anticholinergic class and the benzodiazepines, especially in patients with a history of falls, fractures, delirium, and dementia. Another systematic review that I found was from the up-to-date clinical software program that I have access to at work, a review of pharmacotherapies for GAD from this year. The author was able to do a meta-analysis of 23 clinical trials for benzo efficacy and side effects, and also for five clinical trials involving hydroxazine. And his conclusions were that the benzos are effective for acute and long-term GAD treatment, and that they should be avoided in individuals who have substance use disorder, and that they are associated with withdrawal syndromes. Benzos also have side effects, which can be dangerous, including psychomotor impairment, amnesia, and dependence. That hydroxazine is effective for GAD, and in particular, it helps with insomnia, which is often associated with the disorder, and that hydroxazine is recommended as an alternative to benzos in individuals who have a history of substance use disorder. This was terrific information. However, it did not include any data on the older adult population. A review out of Canada and Italy in 2010 was a review and meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials of hydroxazine and placebo or other anxiolytic drugs. And they determined that the efficacy of hydroxazine with placebo or um, other agents alleviating GAD symptoms were similar. Hydroxazine is acceptable in the treatment of GAD and that the adverse effects of hydroxazine are comparable to other active agents. They also looked at, at hydroxazine as a first-line GAD treatment as opposed to the SSRIs and SNRIs. And they found that hydroxazine showed better efficacy than placebo, and there were no differences in rates of side effects. It was similar to bromazepam and had no difference in side effects when um, benzos were tested. The authors determined though that their results were inconclusive due to the limitation that their data was not of very high quality. And for me, in this study, no older adults were included. A study done in 2007 in the US was a comparative study of behavioral and pharmacological interventions for anxiety in older adults ages 60 and over. 32 studies focused on the anxiety disorder in this population and the efficacy of current treatments. They also included some uncontrolled studies because of the fact that there were limited numbers of studies available with older adult subjects. The study showed that there were greater improvements in GAD in the pharmacological inter intervention group versus the behavioral therapy group, but they identified that the limitation was the inability to blind for the behavioral therapy studies and that they needed more old, old adult participants. In other words, more individuals ages 80 and over. At this point, what I'm going to do is just sort of briefly examine the other studies that I found that were of lesser quality just in the interest of time. Feel free to pause this recording at any time to review in depth any information on the slides. An observational study out of France took a look at PIMS that were um, in pharmacy reimbursement records in individuals aged 75 and over during a three-month period and found that hydroxazine was in the top four most prescribed PIMS in the sample. A study out of Germany looked at a 
uh, cohort of GAD patients who were being prescribed medications by their general practitioner for a period of 12 months. And they used the Beers criteria and identified the um, numbers of um, risky prescriptions and um, determined that older adults have much greater risk of adverse events with the PIMS. And they recognized that a lack of randomized controlled trials in this population it's problematic because that's what prescribers generally use to guide their clinical decision making. A narrative review out of the US looked at medication use and functional status in the elderly and demonstrated how certain medications can negatively impact upon function. They touched on the concept of polypharmacy among the older adult and the association between uh, benzodiazepine use and functional status decline. The clinical practice guideline that I found out of the Mayo Clinic from 2016 described um, the prescribing of benzos to individuals age 65 and older, discussed some of the problems associated with that, ways to reduce use, and listed some of the alternatives for it. They made a point to state that their recommendations were intended to support clinical judgment and not prohibit prescribing of any particular drugs or drug classes, but they did make recommendations to avoid benzos in a number of different circumstances and that the best alternatives for the treatment of GAD include the antidepressants. The research protocol that I found designed by researchers in the USA, Canada, and New Zealand was to look at benzodiazepines for GAD. Um, at this point in time, I don't know if that study has actually been done or what phase it's in um, because this is strictly a protocol. I thought that I might try emailing one of the researchers to see if they could tell me what the current status of this um, research protocol is at this point. In appraising the evidence, it was clear that there were no studies specifically examining hydroxyzine versus benzos in the older adult with GAD, and that most studies involved individuals under the age of 65. There were high quality studies presented um, that presented data on the effectiveness of hydroxyzine and benzos, and also the risks and adverse effects associated with both. And there were limited data reports, though, of actual effects of benzos and hydroxyzine in the older adult. And it was interesting to me that the studies were primarily conducted outside of the US. When I analyzed the appropriateness and usefulness in practice, I found that hydroxyzine and benzos are effective adjunct therapies for GAD, that hydroxyzine as being one of the anticholinergics and the benzos are classified by the beers as PIMS for the older adult and that prescribing those drugs increases the risk of adverse drug events in older adults. That careful consideration is needed on a case by case, patient by patient basis in clinical decision making when prescribing for the older adult and that evidence is lacking on the effectiveness and safety of hydroxyzine um, and also as an alternative to benzos, specifically for the treatment of GAD in the older population. Recommendations for practice, some ideas I came up with include um, development and conducting clinical inquiry into this practice issue, um, gaining IRB approval, and possibly querying the electronic health record for numbers of patients with GAD who are age 65 and older with prescription orders for hydroxyzine and benzos, and then possibly cross-referencing them with the diagnoses of things like fall, fracture, MVA, cognitive impairment, and others. And we might be able to identify those by looking at specific visit encounters, such as visits in the outpatient side, in the urgent care, and in the ER. And then we could recruit patients for an interview using a questionnaire to assess their GAD symptoms, their medication effectiveness, side effects, their feelings about their disorder, and their preferences for treatment. 
And what we could do with this data is we could use it to drive clinical decision making within our organization, but also to contribute to the larger body of knowledge. We could also develop webcasts to provide beers criteria updates and the latest research developments in psychopharmacology and best practices for the physicians and nurse practitioners. So to conclude, GAD is the distressing disorder characterized by extreme worry, fear, and sleepless, sleeplessness, and it impairs a person's occupational and social functioning. It's much more common in the older adult than we previously thought, and the goal of treatment is to provide therapies that are effective and safe, keeping in mind that the older adult is more susceptible to adverse drug events than younger people. As evidenced by the literature search, psychotropic medications are not as, ex as extensively studied in older adults, and this makes clinical decision-making more difficult. Right now, it is unclear as to whether the evidence supports the use of hydroxyzine over the benzodiazepines as both a safe and effective adjunct treatment for generalized anxiety in the older adult. At this time, I would like to acknowledge Dr. Randall J. Zableski and Dr. Rena A. Patel, who were my mentors and advisors and consultants in this project. And here is a list of my references in case you would like more information about this subject. I thank you very much for your time and attention. This research project is to be continued. The next phase will take place in the Alverno College Masters of Nursing program. And that's where I'm headed next. Thank you.